visuals. We all want visuals in our class. I'm a visual learner. You know, I see things differently than other people. You know, I want a visual embedded in my classroom so students can see the content. Maybe take a picture of it, right? So you can embed that within your classroom setting, wherever you happen to be in the world. Well, visuals is where we're going to go with this particular program, as you can tell. Let's take a look at visual content here and think about your courses being taught from more of a visual perspective, if you will, or adding more visual components into your classroom. Now, objectives here include just thinking about where online visuals will be important, where you can embed them, and why. Who are those learners that may need them? And what might those contents be? How you might effectively incorporate them in. Taking advantage of visual resources on the web that are free. Taking advantage of the tools that make it easy to create them, share them, and so forth. There also are the challenges to visuals in that you might not have used some of these things before. So as an instructor, you might not have had the opportunity to embed simulations, to embed animations within your classrooms, but today you can. Flow charts you might have done, organizing aids, sure, but maybe not animations. Illustrations and pictures, sure, but maybe not videos so much, but videos, a plethora of videos today. But plethora of photos on the web from everystockphoto.com, Flickr in open source photography, Blip TV for videos in Creative Commons. You know, we've got many ways to visualize contents from timelines, concept maps, taxonomies, you name it, there are ways to visualize it. Animations, sure, you can find an animation for almost any principle or concept that you can think about, whether you're teaching about meteorology and looking at hurricane formation, you know, in the Caribbean, right? Ike, Katrina, and others hitting the coasts of New Orleans and Houston and Florida and so forth. Whether we're talking about virtual tours and field trips around the world or safaris online. Whether we, we might have adventure learning where someone might be exploring in the Arctic or exploring on the high seas and sending back images as they explore out there in the far reaches of the planet or beyond the planet, up in space somewhere, right? People might have blogs with videos attached to them, so it's not just text, but a video with a blog. You have to, though, consider things like storage capacity, cost, risk of exposing those sensitive materials to your students, you know, what kind of space is required. Today, we can store five-hour lectures on the web without people blinking. Ten years ago, five minutes would cause a lot of cons uh, concern and pose a challenge to people. Costs have come down, storage capacity has gone up, bandwidth has gotten better, but there's still many concerns. And there are many opportunities that didn't exist ten years ago, like concept mapping. Now, I've personally been complaining about the lack of concept mapping tools for a decade, and now we have Bubble.us and Gliffy and MindDomo. We have a visual thesaurus, a periodic table of videos, you know, so you can do concept mapping or simulations, virtual archaeology, and autopsy. The University of Leicester has virtual autopsy, slice them and dice them. I don't go there, but I do go to bubble.us for my concept mapping needs. I do go to Gliffy and FreeMind for such. To display your content, display your knowledge on the web. To display your learning through a timeline, like the Simile tool from MIT, or learning tools from the UBC, University of British Columbia. When you can get all your ideas on a concept map, on a timeline, you can compare them, juxtapose them, share them, present them, change them, archive them. We can get the U.S. presidents on a timeline and click on them, or famous people of any type, any stripe, on a timeline, scientists and authors and so forth. You learn a lot about their lives and their impact that you might not have learned about otherwise. When you have virtual tours in museums like the Louvre or the British Museum, where you can explore authentic artwork, 
pieces of art from around the world or discoveries where you can explore the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History, right, on the web and take a 3D look at things and walk through, go to the U.S. Senate chambers in the U.S. Capitol and take a tour, or if you're in engineering to go to drilling sites, if you're in statistics to do randomization of groups or chi-square analysis in a flash animation, or in business to do cash flow or to reenact the Enron crisis, if you're an archaeologist to do virtual archaeology on the web. I mean, look at these visuals that we have available today. It is literally amazing to me that we don't take more advantage of all these possibilities for learning contents, to learn things both textually and visually, dual coding, which I'll talk about in another program coming up. Chemistry on the web, mathematics on the web, uh, healthcare, flowchart kinds of things, just to show visually a uh, chemical uh, experiment so you don't blow up your lab. Or as I said earlier, adventure learning to the Arctic tundra or to the rainforests and bringing that in live for kids in schools. Or from the University of Nottingham in the UK, a periodic table of visual elements so you can see experiments with sodium or iron or whatever. World Mapper Tool to visualize world databases to see science growth by country or pancreatic cancer deaths or youth literacy by country or medical animations and simulations in YouTube to explain gastric bypass surgery or something of that nature or embryo embryotic, uh, human embryology animations here from Indiana University from Valerie O'Loughlin with tests at the end or Google SketchUp to show bridges and and coliseums and you know famous uh, sporting uh, facilities around the world that students who are in architecture classes or drawing classes can look at and use as examples and guides but there's so much out there you have to think about what are you going to be able to use if you've got students who might be out there without the high speed or bandwidth who might not have all the tools and resource capabilities that you have on your desktops that might be learning disabled visually and you might have to rely on audio components. Test this stuff out with other people. Have usability testing on that content so students can see what works and don't work before you incorporate into class. Instructors can see what works and doesn't work. Get feedback as well on those contents. Constantly review. I mean these some of these things go and get uh, you know link rot in effect. They might go by the wayside. They might lose funding. So do evaluate what's out there. And at the end of the semester, maybe assign a reflection activity for your students on what worked and what didn't work. You know, have uh, students maybe create some visual materials themselves. So you are expanding that visual universe for future students based on your current ones. So you're not the only one developing it. Talk to your teaching and learning center, resource center about what they have what support materials they've seen work. They know. They know best. They can share best practices with you. You know, they might present you with some visual elements to include in your class. Uh, you might find things at conferences as well, from your colleagues as well. You might uh, take training courses from your teaching and learning center in Camtasia or Animoto or Cam, uh, MindMeister or whatever, Cam Studio. You might conduct an internal audit of what's possible within your class and even pull your students. Because there are so many resources available today for you to use within your class, it's time to start thinking, you know, putting our little glasses on and reflecting on those visual things that you can embed in your classes so that you can enrich the learning of your students and get all students to learn. Today, there's so many contents out there. I hope you found this program beneficial so you can think about concept mapping tools, timeline tools, you can think about comparison and contrast, you know, to, to even think about animations in your class, YouTube videos, you name it. The world is out there for you to think about using within your classroom setting. So I hope you found this valuable. Are you a visual learner? And what about your students? Good luck in this online visual world. Enjoy.